ladies of el salón the chronicles oye ladies of el salón the chronicles escucha ladies of el salón. dímelo linda and we're back guys i'm liz i'm mari i'm suli and here we go again so we're still in episode uh season four and uh we're just continuing the conversations i just want to say by the way i want to start with saying that i really appreciate the feedback that we've received from our listeners uh we've had listeners all the way from london and and everything and um we are heeding the advice and uh we are we are listening basically no mandaron a callar we talked too much yeah we have a lot to say but you know what the feedback was very good because i think that the guests that we choose have a lot to say and um the guests that that not only that we choose but that agree to come on the show uh are very interesting and have a lot to say and we're gonna let them speak so thank you for your feedback please continue to give it to us the good the bad the ugly y con yes. eso take it away mari um okay yeah porque nosotros we like to talk and that's probably <laughs> why we have a podcast so it's hard because we're sometimes we don't have a guest and so we're used to just being us talking so you know yeah. when we have a guest it just becomes a conversation so people sometimes want to hear it like an interview where you ask them a question and let them go but since it's a conversation sometimes we interject but we're going to shut the fuck up for now <laughs> when we have a guest <laughs> so okay so my segment is am i the asshole And I thought this one was interesting and appropriate with uh, what's going on right now uh, with Title IX. So the person writes, am I the asshole for telling the truth to our, our daughter about what is and isn't for girls? My wife and me, he wrote, uh, have one daughter, Freya. She's five and a lovely kid. When she was born, we decided that while we wouldn't go full gender, ne gender neutral, we wouldn't push her into being more traditionally feminine or masculine, whatever we had. As it stands, Freya has a variety of interests. She loves playing football with me outside, and I've even taught her some light boxing. She also has an entirely pink room and loves trying on dresses and playing around with makeup. We do our best to avoid saying that certain things are for boys or for girls and just want her to do things that she enjoys. Obviously, she's a bright kid and inevitably she's asking questions about what she need, what she sees for herself. I was watching a match and Freya asked uh, if football was meant for boys because we always see men playing it on TV and at her school only boys play. I hesitated, but in the end, I said yes. Football is mostly played by boys. Freya asked if it was bad that she likes playing it, and um, I said she could play what she wants. My wife was really unhappy with me because we'd always agreed that we wouldn't give her a traditional upbringing. I agree with her, but we also can't treat our daughter like an idiot. She's noticed this, and if we lie, she'll know that we're lying to her. I'm perfectly happy... Um, I'm perfectly happy for her to be whatever she wants, but I also want to treat her with respect and not sugarcoat things, which will ultimately make things worse for her in the long run. Am I the asshole? What do you guys think? I don't think so. I, I, I think that he, I mean, it's reality. Uh, women, are, yes, so there is a, a women's football league. I have an issue with that particular league because the women are wearing very scantily clad outfits. I'm like, why can't we dress like men if we're going to play football? Have you guys ever watched that? The but why women's... do they have to... No. But why, why do they why have to matter? dress? Why does it have to dress like men? That's how why they not dress. Just they... wear... Why no, no, not no. just wear what is what what makes it comfortable to play football for women? Right. So they wear like little uh, bra uh, bralettes. And they wear the really, really tight little booty shorts. And it's almost like objectifying. And a lot of men watch it, not for the sport, I'll, I'll, I'll say, uh, but for what the women are, are wearing and how they, you know, they tackle each other. And they wear their shoulder pads on the outside. Like, you guys should take a look at that. Um, no, I've seen it. Yeah. But, 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 but are I... you objectifying it? No, I'm just saying that why do, in, in that particular case, why do women have to dress like that? 
Why not? Why 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 not? So we're going back to, you know, we want to play sports, we want to do this or whatever, and now the league is saying, yeah, you can play, but be half naked. No, so why so can't you why can't you play and still wear everything that the guy has? I mean, if you want to wear that, that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But right. what I'm saying is that why isn't it the same? So do you, you do realize that that was created for what it was. It was supposed to be for men to go and look at women playing football it wasn't really created for it to be a football team like an nfl for women like a wnba so i think it what happened was it took off and it became very yeah, popular ex and exactly. now now people but why are they going to change it if that's specifically for what they made it for and the women don't have a also, problem so no, I was completely do. wrong. So never mind, because I thought that it was a real football. No, like no, no. no. Football. Well, now it is. So now, now it's like it's, it is. It's become a real thing because it became so popular that now it has become a real thing. But I think it was done more for entertainment as opposed to like mm. an actual sport. And I think now it's become like a real, like the women that go on there, they hustle. I mean, how no, the fuck they're they don't great. Out, they look good. How they don't scrape and come out all bruised. I mean, I'm pretty sure they do, but because they do wear skimpy outfits, but I think that that was the whole premises of the, of the, whatever it was, a sport entertainment, whatever it was. I think now it's just taken a whole new world. Um, but I don't think that that's, I don't think you can put the two in the same category because it's not really like an NFL sport kind of thing. No, I know, but I, I'm just saying that the women that play this sport are extremely athletic and they're extremely right. capable, you know, right. and if, if that's, if, if it's entertainment, that's great. And that's the way you wanted to do it. Fine. But right. you know, now they're trying to garner the respect of being an athlete. We have girls that right. now in 2021 in different parts of the country, they are on football teams. Right. So back to your, mm -hmm. I, am I the asshole, Mari? I think that he, he, he was real. He said, you know, primarily football has historically been for men. However, right. if you want to play it, there should be no reason why you can't, you can play anything that you want. And you know, you don't, I don't have to give you a broom or a mop or a vacuum cleaner. You can have a yeah. hammer, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that you have to, I, I think that, it was okay what he did because he's not saying, oh, no, whatever. No, this is the reality. Football initially is a, was about men, right? right? But things are evolving. And as a female, if that's something that interests you, then my son had a female on his football team last year. And she was good. You know? So there, I think there's being there are more allowances for that. And I think right. that you should be allowed to, to, to play whatever you want to play. I know nothing about football, um, and I've never <laughs> watched the league that you were talking about. So I don't know what they dress, what they're wearing. But I mean, I've seen you know volleyball players wear this the little short shorts, and I sometimes think that you know as a woman, like if I'm doing like like today, I went to yoga. I'm wearing tight pants because it's easier for me to move. So what's to say? And and that was like what my argument was. What's to say that that's not their choice to wear that? But now that Zuli explains it that way, I get your point because I was thinking you were just being judgy. And I was trying no. to call you on being judgy. Yeah. But no, no. if 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 Zuli, you know, now Zuli explains that it it is it was originated to objectify to make it you know like the mud wrestling and wet t shirt right. type of thing. Exactly. That's different. So now I get it. Now I get it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think it's taken a different turn. I think now it's become more of a real thing and people do watch it and it's a sport and the women, not that they weren't hustling before, but now it's like, it's actually become, I want to say like a real, real thing. It's not so much as an entertainment as it was when they first created it. Um, not that I watch it or I even know, so I could be completely wrong, but um, I think that that was the whole premises of it, of women being skimpy so that men can go and watch the same way when we go and watch football, we, we ain't watching it because we trying to see. Well, I was just going to say that I, I watch it because <laughs> I, I want to see these good looking, strong men in tights run from one end to another. Not you, Lizette, cause I know you love football, but me, <laughs> you want to see the tight ends, tight end. I, 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 I do object. Uh, uh, what is it? Objectify the, Objectify. the men. Objectify. I do sit there and, and, and drool over how good they look. 
Um, so I mean, you know. so maybe, so maybe we should have the men switch their uniforms to more resemble yeah. the women's uniform. And that's what I'm you saying. Know, exactly. Like, like no shirts. Absolutely. Go for it. <laughs> Wear the whole thing outside. <laughs> Listen, we have, we have gender inequity in all aspects of our lives. And in the sports right. area, there's a lot of gender inequity. So historically, whether it's the WNBA um, or in soccer, you know, men make a lot more money than women. Women oh, yeah. are not, we don't, we don't garner the attention. We don't garner the, the, uh, the, the fans and all of that. So we don't make, and there's a lot, well, you know, the amount of money that men make playing the same sport. So a couple of years ago when the American, the USA soccer team actually made it, um, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a lot of controversy and they actually went and fought because they won and yet they weren't given the, the money or the accolades that, that they should mm -hmm get right. um or the yeah. recognition as much as men did and i watched that year that season and it they were amazing they were absolutely amazing but i want to go back to title nine so um for anybody who may not know title nine is um uh, a sex uh sexual discrimination federally a federal anti-discrimination law that was that came in in 1972 it is it's a lot and I'm just going to give the, the short condensed version. So basically, in, in, its, uh, in its original form, the, the purpose was to um, prohibit sex discrimination based on, you know, on gender, right? So that if you were a female, you were entitled to the same education and the same athletic opportunities that anybody else. And since then, there have been some amendments with the Obama administration and the Trump administration. Um, Obama, Obama, I believe, wants to have it left more to a federal, uh, uh, to the federal government to enforce. Trump was more of let the states enforce. But the issue right now is as far as it relates to the LGBT community, specifically the transgender community. So if, and it goes on to, if you are biologically a male, and it's more so for the biological male, Right, the, that this is more of an issue, um, and now you are transitioning and you and you identify as a female. Originally, it was you know, you should be able to go to a female bathroom. You should be able to participate in female activities as a female because that is your gender identity. Now, in addition, the problem that is uh, surfacing or the conflict is around sports. And so I ask you guys now how you feel about a trans female, so a biological male who identifies as female, operation notwithstanding, right? So you are transitioning, you identify as a female. Should you compete, not play, compete? And it's taken on more force because the competitions are at a national level now in female sports as a female. And that's where the controversy is. So what do you guys think? Well, we completely messed mm. up the format. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you because we're going me. on title nine. Well, you because we were on me. title. You completely skipped me, but no. we can jump into it and then do it later on or yeah, we can Yeah, that's write. what I was thinking. Yeah. That's because it was okay, gonna be yeah. fragmented if I just went off to look okay, let's do the wash and come back. So I just, I go this along, one. you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, um, my thought on that, we were actually having a conversation about that around the table, the dinner table, because I'm very afraid of having an opinion on this because I'm also concerned with offending any group. Uh, but alas, someone's always going to be offended. Um, Didi brought it up and it was after I had watched what Zuli shared on our Instagram account about the father who's, uh, who was before, I believe Congress. Yes. Or I'm not sure, but on his, on his daughter's birthday. And it was a father that had, uh, kind of gone with the traditional gender assignments for his now daughter and, pretty much uh, had an, a very unhappy child, a child that never smiled. And he was su um, supplicating uh, that, you know, they don't take uh, 
the sports away from his daughter and her happiness away. And, and that really touched me because I understand as a parent, you, you, you advocate for your children. Right. Dee Dee was mentioning to me, though, a conversation that she was having with her, you know, with her bio, biological mother and her side of the family. So my partner, Randy, he he's an athlete or he was an athlete. He was a soccer player. And his ex-wife, her mother, is uh, also uh, she's in she competes in physical and physique and weightlifting and all that kind of stuff. And so I guess they were having a conversation about how it would be unfair for her mom, who's biologically female, was born that way, to compete with a trans woman who genetically, is that the word, or anatomic, biologically, I don't know, but it was male. Biologically uh, is a man. And so it puts women at a disadvantage because clearly you know, uh, a trans woman would be stronger. And I kind of was like stumped. I didn't know what to say about that because it's kind of true. And then my son chimed in with, you know, uh, Serena Williams, uh, although at her peak could be compared to a LeBron and a Michael Jordan or whatever, is still not classified at the lowest of the best. So I looked up uh, an article. If Serena were matched up with one of the pros, like her category in a male's category, and uh, this was the response. Uh, If Serena Williams, even at her peak, took the court against Roger Federer, she would not stand a chance for the simple fact that she is a woman. Contrary to often repeated statements, Serena does not and has never struck the ball as hard as the men. Now, if she were a man at her capacity, yes, but as a woman, she's not. So that makes me kind of question, you know, like, is there a point in that? Because if, if my daughter is, is in a team or, or competing and there is someone that you know, has an advantage, is that fair to my daughter? But then also, is it fair to a trans woman to not be considered a woman and allowed to play with other females? I'm so torn on that. It's a very complicated uh, subject. I mean, to your point, Mari, in in boxing, you have heavyweight, welterweight, lightweight, because you want to make the playing field even, right? In, in, in tennis, women compete against women. Forget about the trans piece of it, right? Women compete against women and in most sports. So on one hand, um, are we now, we can integrate all sports and it, it will, will that make it right or wrong? Or are we going to be at a, at an, at a disadvantage? And so will a woman then never win, right? Or imagine pairing up a lightweight with a heavyweight in boxing. How is that compatible? But then there is the point this is who I am. I identify as this. I should be able to use, uh, you know, when it comes to the bathroom and all that other stuff, I think that they should. I, I, I don't know and I don't have the answer for the controversy regarding sports because I understand both sides. And then some people's answer is, well, why can't they have their own league? And I'm like, well, yeah, no, because now you're singling them out. And, and, and you're saying, right. okay, so this group can only do this. So I don't know what the answer is. I think that there's a lot of conversation that still needs to be had um, around gender equity and, and, and really allowing for a, a playing field for everybody and respecting how you identify. I, right. No, I think this is new to everyone um, as far as, you know, having them play in sports. I think it's something that's never really been discussed to this level. Um, so I think... Um, yeah, it's something that still needs to be discussed and looked into more. I mean, I at one point said, well, what about co-ed sports? Where now it just right. doesn't even matter. Now it's just, it's co-ed and it's not really based on strength, but more on, I don't know, team. The sport, team, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and But is that taking away from someone that wants to really play for for the 
I don't know. It, it's 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 very it's very difficult. I, and, you know, and I I can't speak on their behalf because I don't know how they're feeling. So it's easy for me to say, well, then fix it and do it this way. But maybe that's not what they're looking for. Maybe they want to compete at a level of a woman and and a level of a man. Maybe they want. Maybe they to them it's like I'm as strong as a man, or vice versa. I'm, a, I'm, I'm I can be just as a woman. Um, so. I don't know. It's it's a very difficult and very sensitive topic um, because you yeah. don't want to come off ever um, insulting anyone or being ignorant. And you can't help it because you don't really know much about it. So you, you end up coming both ignorant and, and kind of offens- offensive. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a- well, well, the resistance is more of... Uh in the in the women's uh, sports world right the trans men aren't experiencing this correct but uh but also you know like in the same vein i've seen like some really offensive things online where i think i read someone someone said if and they had like the symbols so it's if you are this and it's the shape and the symbol of a man Mm -hmm. if you were born with the shape and symbol of a man i know where you saw it and choose to go and choose to go to um this bathroom with the shape of a woman then you're gonna wind up uh and then it had like the symbol for a handicap so pretty much what what they're trying to say is that if you're a man and uh, or if you were born a man and now are a trans woman and try to use a female's restroom and i think the person said and my daughter is in the bathroom or whatever you're going to wind up in a wheelchair right. i think that's ignorant because that's very uh, ignorant. women go into bathroom with other women and women are predators too and women can hurt and harm too and what's to say like why is it that um these people are are classified as like dangerous or um, or being capable of harming or yeah. that their intention is to harm, you know, someone of their same gender or the gender that they feel. So I just think like that kind of thinking I am so against. So that's why I'm just like, this is like such, such, so conflicting in my mind mm-hmm. because I can't just, I can't figure it out. And I feel bad for both sides. Um, and you know, and whatever the outcome is, there, there's going to be a loss at, on, on, on yeah. one or the other. Listen, one of the biggest misconceptions, and I don't have the stats in front of me, is that, you know, gays or lesbian commit most sexual crimes or anything like that. And statistics show that it's actually middle-aged white males. And if anybody wants to correct me or, you know, but the last time I checked these statistics, it's not the LGBT community that is committing these crimes. And I think it's extremely ignorant. I agree with you to say that because of what's in your pants, uh, you can't go into the bathroom regardless of what you identify as or how you, you know, look on the outside. I think it's none of your business. Um, I think that that's a private matter. And if you identify as a female and that is how you're portraying yourself in terms of your outward appearance, then how about we just create non-gender conforming bathrooms and, and, Thank you. and move it along and not subject people to, oh, you have to be this or that to put you in a box. But, you know, this right. is a, a, a much bigger conversation um, because women continue to be discriminated against. And the federal government, um, you know, when they sit down to decide on these laws and all that, they really have to take this into consideration the commentary from the media. So a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you guys what Tucker Carlson, a uh, Fox News commentator, said. Mm-hmm. You know, he 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 basically said so. Biden is trying to um, recruit and keep women in the service, right? And he said that Tucker Carlson said that Biden is creating a mockery of the military, and he actually was offended that a woman had that they that they make maternity uniforms for women so on the offshoot of this i happened to have a conversation not that i wanted to it came up and i couldn't even contain myself i was texting you guys last week i was so angry because 
the person that I was speaking with said that, and for those of you who don't remember or don't know, I'm retired NYPD, and she said that women have no business being in the military or being cops. I looked at her, and it took everything in my vein not to curse her out. I chose instead to try and have an intelligent conversation. And maybe not now, but when I was a cop, I helped my own. You know, I am not going to tell you that I could come up against a 205-pound man or whatever and, and win. But there were also guys that I worked with that couldn't do that. You know, I went through the same academy. I did the same exact thing. There were no accommodations for me um, during right. that time. And the same thing for women in the military. You know, right. I, I, and I just think that we really need to move beyond that. And she wouldn't budge. She was just like, well, if I go to a scene, I don't want a woman coming up to me. And I'm like. Okay, well, that's uh, okay. good to know. Then I hope a woman <laughs> never has to rescue her from anything. If, and, hopefully <laughs> well, a, and hopefully a male yeah. will show up and rescue her. But uh, on that, um, Liz, d- m- m- police and firemen are not only rescuing men. They're rescuing women. They're rescuing kids. And sometimes we bring that softer side to yes. being a police officer or we don't have that many uh, fire uh fire women. I don't know if that's the proper word for that, because that one is a little bit more um, female firefighters, female firefighters, because that that does require more strength. So they, you know, physically, maybe women don't always pass the test. So maybe that's why we don't see a lot of women fire women. Um, But I think we do bring that softer caring. And I'm not saying men are not soft and caring, but Sometimes when a woman sees another female officer or another female uh, fireman or something, we feel a sense of connection and we're like, oh, okay. And we feel protected and we're like, okay, you know, I feel good. There's another woman here with me. Just like when you go to the doctor, to a gynecologist, there's always a woman present. It just brings that sense of comfort that you're okay and nothing is going to happen. Um, So I think that that she's being ignorant, that person that you had the conversation with and women can do just as much as men can. And we've proven that. Yeah. Listen, 20, I think everybody, well, I think everybody brings something to the table and it's a partnership. Absolutely. So whether it's in, in any way, it's a branch of the military, the police department, the fire department. I don't think that based on your sex, you should automatically be X'd out. And, yeah. and I think that opportunity, everybody can bring something to the table and is capable. Um, absolutely. And, and it should be across the playing field. So, yeah, Title IX and, and sex discrimination, that's how it really starts, you know, equity. And there's still, 2021, a lot of inequity. Yeah. Well, one of the, I want to circle back to your comment about Tucker Carlson. I, I, I can't stand that man. Uh. And I'm starting to have a real issue, I'm sorry, with white men because they're the angriest They're the ones that want to make all these decisions about us. And I'm sorry, not all of them, because I know some amazing ones, but it's just what about the serial killers? I mean, not the serial killers, the mass shooters. They're all white, angry men. And most of the supremacists are white men. Look at what just happened. And most serial killers are white men. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but but look at the mass shooting. Yeah. Now now targeting Asians and specifically more Asian women again. So, you know, what is up with this? It just seems to be almost like um like the common denominator right. is white Caucasian, angry as fuck against women mostly. You know, I, I don't, I, I'm starting no long. I'm starting to not feel safe because it's like, you know, s- white men fit that profile. You don't know who's who. And, and, and it just seems to be something that, you know, we're ready to discuss everything else, but you don't hear Tucker Carlson talking about that. You right. know, the, 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 the sheriff or whoever was the officer that was discussing, you know, after arresting, arresting this guy, he had a bad day. Not that he is a, a terrorist. Not that it, he was a, 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 a thug. He wasn't a goon. He wasn't a. He had a bad day. You know, it's I, it's just what I what I'm seeing is really it really frightens me because I think 
one goes hand in hand. There's a lot of misogyny. There's a lot of racism. There's a lot of anger. And, you know, the prior administration really encouraged this behavior and they're emboldened. And really all three of us right now, we, we, any one of us can be a target because we are what they are not. But what about the congressman's comments about, in his view, he thought he was defending the Asian community by saying we should get the longest rope or whatever and hang it from the longest tree in Texas. Because like, lynching is okay. Was it ever okay? Uh, hello? No, so, it, like, how is that? And, and not to say, remember, the only people who got lynched were black people who, black people. Were, who yeah. did nothing other than be black. Right. So, or, or, so lynching is wrong no matter what, no uh, matter what you hello? are. Exactly. So, but these are the people that we voted into office and these are the off the cuff comments that they make. I, you know, I have never been this interested in, in, in politics. And now I have never been more aware of how ignorant our politicians are. Absolutely. And that ho the whole thing, like just, it, it just bothers me, especially like what's happening in the Asian community. Like this has been happening for a while. It's you, hate. You guys it's know hate. Them. It's hate. Yes. It's just hate. And this all started. Well, I mean, it, it's happened a long time. I work in, in, in a, a predominantly um, Asian community, you know, near Flushing. Most of our users in the courthouse are of Asian, of Asian descent. Right. And you see it, you hear it, you, you can tell the undertones, the, the mm -hmm. microaggression, you know, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. we had the administration that started calling this the China virus. Then they call it, oh, because there was the, 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 the Spanish flu. So now this is no, because you know that this is a microaggression. You're not saying it because it regionally came from that area because it wasn't any Asian Americans that brought it here. Actually, it came from Europe. The, the first ones detected didn't come from China, but it's the xenophobia that's inserted and it's all of these it's so layered and you don't hear tucker carlson talking about that shit he wants to talk about women that are pregnant in the military shut the fuck up that's what he needs to do that, no he, that asshole fucking pisses me the fuck off well yeah, now i'm gonna sorry. count now i'm gonna not counter you because i agree with everything that you said and with the passion sorry. but i also posted really quick uh, a couple of weeks ago about the feminist author jill philippa philipovic who suggested on Twitter that stay-at-home moms set a bad example for their children because the decision not to work sends the message that they are un that they are not ambitious. So, circling back to you know discrimination and uh, gender equity, and also now we have a feminist who is saying that women who stay at home are not ambitious and that we can't have it both ways, say women empowerment, but then choose to stay at home because that sends and, the wrong message. And she's a feminist? Yes, ma'am. Jill <laughs> Philopobic, and she's an author. Well, isn't that contrary wish... to what a feminist is? <laughs> Wait, so, so no, because what she's, what she's implying is that a stay at home mom or a housewife or whatever those, you know, those old terms are, um, do not set a good example for, you know, women in business, women, um, in the workforce, you know, they're encouraging girls to be taken care of, but being, uh, staying at home is a, a is a job. You're it's the job. CEO of your, of your home. You're, you're managing a household. And Absolutely. to be honest with you, I go to work to get the fuck out my house. Cause it's harder to stay home than to go to my job. It is going to work is easier for me when I work so from she home. When I work from home, I work double because not only am I mm -hmm. working, but now I'm also doing the things that I have to do in my household. So I think that being a stay at home mom is actually, it's more rewarding, right? Because you are raising a family and you're there and you're watching their every step. You're taking care of uh, your, your household or whatever it is that you want to do. That's your business. I personally cannot work, cannot be a stay at home mom because I will go fucking crazy. I need to do certain things, but that's not to say that I'm going to judge a mother that wants to stay at home. Some women, that's what they want to do. They want to have babies and they want to stay home and they want to raise their family and they want to take care of their family. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. 
It's their fucking choice. It's their I don't choice. understand. People, they, we we should have like a mute button for people like this that just how want do we to impose? Their so let me let me piss you off a little more. She says, "What example are Not you cool. setting when dad works for pay and mom does the care work at home?" Lots of reasons not to want to set that example for a child. Well, how so, about you mind your business and go crawl under <laughs> a fucking rock? So, by the way, she doesn't have children. <laughs> She's oh, of feminist. course not. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Usually the so, ones making decisions, like the people that are anti-abortion, they don't have fucking vaginas. They don't have uteruses. They don't carry a child. It's fucking white men. And of course, this white woman i'm assuming she's a white woman yes ma'am <laughs> because typically that is the common denominator a white person I, you know is making fucking you know I, I, so opinionated I, sorry why don't why don't we but it's but i got my period <laughs> we why don't we make 2021 a stay in your fucking lane kind of year and people mind your business yes. and stay in your fucking lane and not worry about what my fucking neighbor is doing or what the other person down the block is doing. Let them be. Let them do whatever the fuck they want to do. Mind your business. How is that affecting your day-to-day -day life? It's not, right? So shut the fuck up. If well, a woman because... wants to stay at home, if a father wants to stay at home and raise their kid and the woman wants to work, that's their fucking prerogative. Mind your fucking business. Well, Mind because it's a, it's, a, it's a movement and she wants everybody because if one person does one thing, it messes up the movement. And I agree with you, Zuli. It's not a unilateral decision. It's a decision that has to be made in the family. If the woman happens to make more money or whatever, and it works for the family to provide more support at home and do all these things. So you don't have to go to daycare or whatever, although there's, there's good stuff about daycare in terms of socialization and all that. I mean, it's a decision for the family. Uh, a stay-at-home dad can be just as good as a stay-at-home mom, or they can both work and choose to go to daycare. Whatever the fuck works for you. Right, right. I it grew up with a stay-at-home. I grew up with a stay-at-home mom, and I and I cherish those moments. And my mom took care of us, and I have great memories. And I don't know how it would have been had she been at work. Maybe you know that's what made me who I am today. The fact that I had that person to come home to a, a cooked meal, clean house, you know, and all that as a child, you want that. And I think that's very hard to balance when you work and you can't have it both ways. But as a working mom, you, you make sacrifices. And if, let me tell you, if I could stay at home and raise my son and have everything paid for, then why wouldn't I do that? You know, but it's not my prerogative. I want to go to work. It's what I want to do. It's a personal fucking decision. Who am I to impose that on somebody else? It's just, right. it doesn't, Listen, I, don't, in, I don't understand. In my house, and my kids are older, and they can freaking do for themselves. They love the fact that I'm home, that I'm working full time from home. And they verbalize mm -hmm. it, mommy, because you're not out of the house all the time. And the same thing with their father, though. They're like, oh, dad, you know, he works, their father works crazy hours. So they say, oh, I wish dad was home more or whatever. So it's not about the female or the male because mm -hmm. the man, I think a man can do that and provide the nurturing environment as well. But I noticed the difference because when I would be at work, I would leave, you know, guys, 630 yeah. in the morning. And then we come back eight o'clock at night or whatever. And then there's no connection. Now I'm like a fucking Uber driver because I'm driving my son everywhere under creation and I'm cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner and everything in between while I'm still working. I'm sorry, I digress. Listen, but listen. <laughs> I, it's yeah. divide and conquer. It's divide and conquer and however you see fit and however it works for you, that's how you should make it happen in your marriage, in your union, and however. And I think no one should have anything to say about that. Unless you're paying my bills, shut the fuck up. All righty then. And on that note, <laughs> can you give us the wash? So, guys, this is a, I mean, I, I know we went from Title IX, but really the, the broader conversation is about women's, uh, you know, gender equity and women's rights and discrimination and all of it mishmashes. Um, give us your feedback. Uh, we'd really love to hear about, you know, what you have to say or what you think. Uh, either way works. I mean, yeah, I know we come off, I know we come off a little strong and we're like, shut the fuck up and all that. But listen, if you have, <laughs> if you have your opinion, if you have your opinion about, uh, women who stay at home, we want to hear it too. Listen, we're open to hear the other side of it. Um, regardless of how we feel about it, we would like to hear what you think. Should a woman stay home? Should a woman get up and go to work? You know, let us know what you feel. Right. Or a man. But anyway, Army. well, I've done, I've actually done both and they're, and they're both very rewarding in very Absolutely. different ways. Exactly. So, so exactly. I, I have been a stay at home mom at, at, when I had my, my it's... daughter and, um, you know, sometimes 
keeping the kids at home saves you money because child mm-hmm. care is not is not cheap it's and some expensive. people sometimes going to work <laughs> i mean it's a wash what you pay in child care and mm-hmm. so yeah. you know everyone makes decisions according to what suits them like you said and so all of these people like having opinions yeah. and you know when they're not living it you know can go suck a you know what <laughs> And, um, Absolutely. and also, and also I want to insert there, you know, yes, I did go into the whole, you know, the, the mass shooting, but I want to emphasize also, yes. you know, bring awareness to, you know, the stop, uh, Asian hate, you know, it's really sad. It's really scary. It's- and. And the victims that I'm seeing are mostly women. Yes. And yeah. some are like one guy beat up a 70 year old lady. Like that's unacceptable. Like, was this the one that she went right back and knocked him out and gave him. And a- she did. Yeah. And she did what the cops didn't do. She fucked him up too. Good. Yeah. And but, maybe that's what needs to happen. You know, my. Yeah. But yeah, they, we need to definitely the hate needs to stop. I'm sorry, Marty. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's just, you know, it's back to like, I remember when we were talking about, you know, the, uh, black lives matter and all of this and it's just like come on let's be human right let's right. not let's not feed into all this divisiveness right it just it serves no one it really doesn't no. and it, it really makes me really sad i also have my period so i'm just really no, sad I'm about about Italy, things no, and angry and angry no. about a lot of no things. yeah so i mean <laughs> one of the one of the victims was a mom from uh north korea and she has yeah. two teenage boys, one I think who is um, maybe 18, 19 years old, so he considered an adult, and they have no one. They just had yeah. their mother and the two of them, the two siblings, two boys, and now they have no one. Their whole entire family is in North Korea, and if you know anything about that, is they can't just get on a plane and come out here, or they can't even get on a plane and go back into their um, their country. So they're stuck here, and they're young, and they just lost the only person that was the money maker in their household, and yeah. that breaks my heart. I'm also on my period. There's a, there's a <laughs> goal. Right? Oh my that, god! What is it with the two of you? You know. Yeah, I'm we're kidding. we're in sync. But you know, there's a GoFundMe for them. There is that a GoFundMe is over a yeah. million dollars. But guys, you know. remember, they the government has still on the ledge about whether or not this was a hate crime. They're not sure. They haven't classified it because they think that he had a sexual addiction and there was a bunch of shut other stuff. Shut the fuck up. Shut okay. the fuck up. Like, come on, Listen. government. Shut the fuck Listen. up. Like, he we, this is not a hate crime. Him. He did not have a, a, a fixation for, for, for sex or whatever the fuck it is that they want to put this on. He did not go into a, a broadcasting place where they do porn and kill a bunch of fucking porn people or he didn't you know he went and he specifically went into an asian massage place community community and killed these asian women they were asian they weren't of different classes and nationalities and all that crap they were asian so it is a hate crime it is a hate crime and they need to fucking start calling it like it is and i'm tired when it comes to to their own they protect them and they they change the the tone on how they report the news the narrative but yes Mm -hmm. but when it comes if it would have been a hispanic or if it would have been a black person or any other person other than caucasian they would have said oh this monster this criminal this whatever they would have every derogatory or negative word they would have used so they need to stop that shit they really do not only that I haven't really seen his picture plastered all over the place, like on a continuous basis and all that. So, all right then. Well, I think this was a very good conversation, very lively. This was a whole rant. We this had, was a whole 44 uh, minutes of a, ranting. But So now we're going to switch gears or whatever and yeah. go into the wash. What you got for us, Zuli? So, <laughs> welcome to the little, little segment of the wash where I can either flush... Flush, flush. <laughs> I want to flush that whole conversation we just had, where we can, where I can either fluff and fold or air your dirty laundry. So I'm gonna talk about A Rod and J Lo, guys. A Rod and J Lo. Oh no, it's another one. Bites there goes the best for for J Lo, but but really, rumor, really. And now, well, the rumor is that they're mm. working on it, and right now they're on vacation trying to fix their relationship. And the reason why is their kids are having a really hard time with the breakup. And so they're doing it for the kids. They're giving it a second chance. They're trying to see if they can make it work. Um, but I'm thinking Era went uh, went out there and did some dirt on JLo, and JLo was like, uh, 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 I'm not having it. You he know, stepped out. he's you know he's a bit of a cat. That's the rumor. He's, 
That's mm-hmm. a rumor. The, yeah. the rumor is that he's been sexting or texting or whatever with women. Um, he's been linked to some girl from Bravo, uh, uh, you know, that he's been having. She some... denied it, though. She denied it. She denied it. But, you know, of course, we can deny, right? Deny, deny, deny. <laughs> but um, he's had, he has a, a lot of women that he's dated in the past. I mean, from Bravo women all the way to Madonna. He's had, I mean... Kate Hudson, Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz. He has a lot. I mean, not to say that JLo doesn't have a long list as well. So I think they are meant for each other. But um, listen, if they can make it work, good for them. Make it work. I had to get together before Halloween, though. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Maddie? Why? Why before Halloween? Because, because... I already bought the fabric to my <laughs> green dress because I'm J-Lo for Halloween and Randy's A-Rod. And we, you know, I told Randy was like, so what are we going to do? We're going to switch it up. I said, no, then we'll just fucking be broken up A-Rod and J-Lo. There you go. Fucking being A-Rod. I was going to say, you can still be them. Hey, listen, nobody knows what's going on behind closed doors. I would really no. love to see them bake it, you know, and because yeah. and from all appearances, it looks like, you know, the kids have really become close with J-Lo and all that and vice versa. Um, right. It would be nice, but again, we really don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Maybe no, he it's has a, shame. a small dick. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I've I'm seen just him saying. in tight pants. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he was doing steroids for a while, so maybe it, they may ha- there may be some shrinkage there, but I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh. Well, I don't, I don't think I don't think J Lo is a size queen, and this is why I don't think why? she's a size queen because I have a friend that dated Casey Affleck, and Casey Affleck has, uh, according to her, a baby dick. So, but her Mark Affleck, Anthony is a donkey. Yeah, so that's why I think that she is. Well, it's, it's not about the size, well, you know. Okay. But wait a second. Who I said? But J Lo didn't date Casey. She dated Ben. But she, she dated ben. his brother. So, also, she I dated mean, both think, of them. May run in the no, family. No, she dated his brother Ben Affleck. So I'm thinking, you know, if oh. if one has a baby dick, the other one's not gonna have a freaking elephant trunk. You know, it's they're related. You know, <laughs> not necessarily. Oh. <laughs> Look at siblings in with with breasts. Some girls in the in siblings have big breasts. Others don't. Mm. Well, I could guess. be. I, guess. Guess. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I, I hope know. they work it out. I hope they make it work. So, um, I want to also talk about the Grammys. So this was the sixty third Grammy Award, and it was last Sunday, and women swept the Grammys. I mean, it was so many women who won and congratulations to every single one of them. You deserve it. Uh, Beyonce won a Grammy. Not only did she win a Grammy, but Blue, her daughter, won an Emmy along with her for the song that they that they had together. So I thought that that was so cute. She was, I think, the second youngest person to win a Grammy. I think Blue is seven years old. She might be a little yeah. older. She might be a little older, but, um, but yeah, so I thought that that was, that great. was for brown skin girls, right? Brown, brown skin. skin girls? Yes. Brown skin girls. Um, she, she, at the end, I think she says like a little verse. I don't know if you guys have heard brown skin girl, but in the end she says, I'm a brown skin mm-hmm. girl, you know, so can't sing for shit, mm-hmm. but whatever. Um, Megan Thee Stallion won, uh, for new best artist, female rapper. Um, no one has won that category since Lauren Hill back in 1999. So I thought that that was great. Good for, Good for her. Um, she also nabbed uh, uh, for performance in Savage. And, you know, we all like that Savage. Everybody was doing the little videos well, on now TikTok. Lizette knows the song. Yes. Well, the collaboration that she did with Cardi B was, I mean, and yes, guys, I am going to say it was fucking hot. Really it do was, tell. Uh, for, for WAP, I watched it. And I was like, do tell. bitches, go. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't hate. I do not hate. I was like, so first of all, it's a big deal that I know who Megan Thee Stallion is, right? So- <laughs> right, right. But the so- collaboration between her and Cardi B was amazing. That, yes. that show was amazing. So to keep going down the list real quick, Billie Eilish won Record of the Year. Uh, her won for her song Breathe, which came out yeah. right after uh, she actually put it together because of the um george floyd george floyd thank you very much you know my memory skips me a little and dua lipa one for uh also one for song of the year for nostal future nostalgia and um let's see who else who else won here and i think that wait could there be two songs of the year yeah 
Oh, in different genres. Different, yeah, different, different genres. genres. Different genres. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Um, so yeah, so it seems like all these and women, Taylor Swift won. Taylor, I was also. I was about yeah. to get to Taylor Swift, Swift. Taylor Swift, but she seems to win every year. Not but good year. for her. <laughs> it's good. good for her. No, you know she's she's she used to be country and she's pop now, pop music, and I think that that's it it sells a lot. Yeah. yeah, and country and pop are the two uh, you know genres that always constantly win. So good for her on winning her other one, and I think it was very. Uh, nice of uh, Beyonce to send her flowers for winning because I, I don't know if you guys remember that one time when Kanye came up on the stage and ripped the mic off. So I think they've always had that little bit of a, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know. But, um, yeah, yeah. you know, Beyonce felt bad because of that. But I also wanted to bring in Tiffany Haddish, who won a Grammy yes. for, uh, she yes. won a Grammy. I love her. For- Yes, I love her too. She's actually working on a new film now, which um, it's she she she's working on a new film. I don't know the title of it, but I I heard that it's uh it's similar to um. I'll circle back to that one because I can't remember exactly what it was. You know, you know me, guys, so don't worry about it. Um, but she's also on a show called "The Kids Say the Darnest Things," which um used oh to God, yeah. which used to be with what's his face was now in jail. Uh, <laughs> Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. I forgot Bill Cosby. Listen, name. yes, I've erased them completely out of my mind for being, you know, a pervert. Mm-hmm. But um, but you know, she's now doing. She's the host for the Kids Say the Darnest Things, and so she won for uh, her comedy, uh, Black Mitzvah. Black Mitzvah. Uh, Black Mitzvah. So that's mm-hmm. what she won the Grammy for. So very happy for you, Tiffany Haddish. I'm very happy for every single woman who won a Grammy and. Let's keep doing our thing, and women do belong wherever the hell they want to fucking belong. So we'll end it with that. (laughs) Whoa. And on that That note, note. okay, good circle back. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed our hour-long rant. Yes. And um, thank you. We wanted to thank for the... Oh, wait, no. Liz already thanked for the response that we got, and we addressed that. Yes, I'm sorry. It's the That's okay. We can thank again, because it's important. Yes. I I blame my for all the years of drug abuse. I used to smoke weed, guys, so my memory. (laughs) (laughs) I can't remember shit. I have early fucking dementia. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, all right. Well, that's all the time we have for, um, for today. Guys, make sure to listen to us on however you consume your podcast. Um, share with your friends, family, please leave us a rating and a review that makes us more visible. You can support it. Sound Chronicles by going to our website and buying our merch, which we are wearing today. And, or you can, (laughs) you can go to Patreon, you can cash app, Venmo, como quiera, any little bit helps. And, um, also, we're on YouTube, so we are posting clips on YouTube, you so you can, can see our ugly faces. You can see our faces <laughs> now. <laughs> and um, can... I guess that's all for now. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. This was actually very cathartic and therapeutic for me, as I'm <laughs> very hormonal. And okay. um, I guess we'll do this again next week. Yes. Bye. That's all for now. Bye. <laughs> Ladies of El Salón, the Chronicles. Oye, ladies of El Salón, the Chronicles. Escucha.